Hi DIYers, this is Michael from Alarm Grid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to enroll a Honeywell 6 fob key fob with the Honeywell Lyric alarm system. Uh, the 6 fob key fob is designed exclusively for use with the Honeywell Lyric. Uh, it can't be used with any other uh, security system. So if you have a Honeywell Lyric, then it's a good key fob to use. And if you don't have a Lyric, then you want to find a different key fob. Um, it's a part of the 6 series lineup, uh, so it uses 128-bit uh, AES encryption for enhanced wireless security. You see it has 4 buttons on there, um, but you can also use uh, dual button inputs as well with the key fob. So uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, so we're at the main screen of the Lyric. We're going to choose security, we're going to choose tools, and we're going to enter in our installer code, which ours is at the default of 4112, and we're going to choose program. And then we're going to choose keys. We're not going to choose uh, this six programming um, option, which you would normally use for most other six series devices. We're just going to stay at this uh, first initial programming screen, and we're going to choose keys. And now we're going to choose add new. And so this is the, the key fob uh, programming menu, where we'll be uh, setting up the key fob. Uh, so uh, the first thing I want to do, um, we're going to choose uh, serial number. And we're going to change the RF type to six. And uh, this is how we will auto-enroll the key fob. We're going to uh, press and hold the top two buttons on the key fob, and you'll notice that the LED lights, once I do this, uh, they'll begin alternating. Um, so that, that's how you know that it's not enrolled with the system, and it's um, you know uh, trying to enroll with a Lyric. So we're going to press the buttons now. We're doing that now. OK, and um, it enrolled the serial number, which is also known as the MAC address. And it took us back to the main screen, so we're good. Uh, the key fob is auto-enrolled. Um, so now you have to choose a user for the key fob. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to choose a user that's not going to work. I'm going to choose a user that's not uh, set up with the system yet to demonstrate that the key fob won't work properly until we assign it um, a user that is enrolled. So normally, you would set it with the master or a user code that is enrolled. Um, but in our case, I'm just going to choose user 9 for now. And I'll demonstrate later that the key fob is not going to work. And then I'll go back and change it to the master code. And then I'll show that the key fob does work because the master code is uh, set up with the system. So um, one thing I do want to do, um, uh, you see that there are four button keys on the key fob. And you'll notice uh, the key fob has four buttons. And they actually correspond. This um, upper left button goes with the upper left uh, menu option. The upper right one goes with the upper right menu option. The lower left one goes with the lower left option. And the bottom right one goes with the bottom right option. You'll notice uh, the, the button key 4, the lower right one, right here, the panic button. It currently doesn't have a response uh, assigned to it. So uh, we'll change that. We'll, we'll, make that into, uh, we'll make that into a 24-hour audible, uh, just so we can demonstrate that that works later on when we go to do that. Now, if you are um, setting up this key fob, and you're following SIA guidelines. That's the Security Industry Association. Uh, they have uh, special guidelines for um, preventing false alarms. You actually have to follow a special process um, to um, you know, prevent false alarms, uh, to meet their guidelines. So what we're going to do, there, there are two ways to do this, actually. You can set it to a six-button key fob or an eight-button key fob. Um, I'm going to show you the six-button option. Uh, you'll see in the FAQ linked below that there is um, the eight-button eight option described. But I'm only going to show you the six button option. So uh, we're going to change the key type. We're going to keep toggling it until we have, um, I, I actually passed it there, so we'll go back again, um, until we get six button right there. Now, um, what we want to do, uh, first of all, I'm going to set this back to uh, 24 hour audible just so we can demonstrate the single button input. Um, normally, uh, to meet SIA guidelines, you wouldn't use uh, this fourth button with uh, the, the uh, panic switch, the panic button. Uh, so you would actually leave this um, something that's not going to trigger an alarm on your system. But uh, for our example, we'll, we'll keep it that way just to show you. But SIA guidelines, normally what you would do is you would set button 6 to um, the, the panic button, and we'll, we'll make it 24-hour audible. And now you'll notice that there's a fifth button on here, and we're just going to set that to um, no response because we're not using the fifth button on the key fob. Now what we want to do, uh, we have to note uh, that uh, button 6 it's zone number 136. It's impor important to remember that because we're going to go in and manually change zone 136 to be um, to a different loop number. So we're going to we're going to do that. Um, so make sure to note that number. In our case, 136. And for now, we're going to choose save, and we're going to choose the return arrow in the upper right, 
and we're going to choose zones, and we're going to scroll down to 136. So we'll get there. All right, uh, button six. We're going to edit, and then we're going to change the loop number to loop number five. Just toggle it until we get to loop number five. And that's going to allow us to use the bottom two buttons to trigger a panic. Um, but remember, I didn't set the user to an appropriate user. I set it to a user that's not set up with the system. So I will click Save for now. And I'm going to back out to the main screen. And you're going to see that the key fob doesn't do anything. Um, we're going to try the upper, right, uh, upper left button right here. And we're going to see that nothing happens because I didn't set it to a user that's assigned with the system. So what we have to do, we have to go back into Tools, and we'll choose uh, 4112. We're going to go to Program and Keys, and we're going to click on the key fob to highlight it blue, and then we're going to click Edit. And this time, we're going to set it to a user that is set up with the system. We'll use our master code, our master user. So uh, now when I do the key fob, it should work properly. But first, I have to save, and I'm going to back out to the main screen again. And now. Um, just a warning, uh, you will get a loud chime when we press the, the button on the key fob. So if you are wearing headphones, then uh, watch out, be careful. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to press the button, you'll see that we get the response on the system. There we go. We armed away. And now let's try pressing the disarm button. And here we got the disarm button. Now I'm going to demonstrate the panic button. First, I'm going to do it with the non-SIA guidelines uh, that we set up with the response uh, for. Uh, remember the lower, the lower right button. Remember they correspond: upper left, upper right, lower left, bottom, bottom right. Um, so we're, we're going to press the the panic button here, uh, and be careful because this is going to trigger a, a siren. We did set this to audible, so that way you know that there is a an alarm on your system that you've triggered by the key fob. So we're going to do that. And there, we're in alarm now. We're going to disarm with our master code. Disarmed. Not ready to arm. And we have, we have to do a double disarm, so we'll click disarm again. You could also press the home key, uh, the green home, home button right there. We want to turn our master code again. Disarmed. Ready to arm. Charm. And now we're, we're in our ready to arm state. Um, so remember, that was the non SIA guidelines. Um, if we weren't uh, following the guidelines um, recommended by the Security Industry Association, but since we set it up, um, remember, normally you would set this button to a no response because to prevent false alarms, they want a dual button input. Having to press two buttons, it's less likely you'll make a mistake and accidentally trigger an alarm on your system. But um, since we did set it up, I can press the two bottom buttons and you'll see that nothing happens. <laughs> so it turns out that the reason that nothing happened was because I forgot to click save when I was adjusting the loop number for zone number 136. Um, I kept it at loop number six, but I needed to set it to loop number five. So I'm going to go and change that now. Um, so if you make the same mistake that I did, you can get back into programming. Four, one, one, two. Assuming your system has the default installer code, we'll program, and then we'll do zones, and we're going to go down to 136. We'll click. Edit. We'll highlight it, and we'll click edit, and then we'll change the loop number to loop number five. All right, then we'll click Save this time. Remember, last time I backed out, I didn't save it. So now we'll back out to the main screen. And now this is the SIA guidelines, headphone warning. We'll press and hold the bottom two buttons. And there we got the alarm. And we'll disarm with, we'll silence it with the master code. And then, then we'll do the double disarm. We'll enter in the master code again. And now we're at the ready to arm screen, and our key fob is enrolled with the system. So that's how you enroll a Honeywell 6 fob key fob with the Honeywell Lyric alarm system. If you have any questions about the Honeywell Lyric or the 6 fob key fob or about alarm monitoring services, send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below to like the video, and remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.